welcome to English for Experience. I'm E.T. Chisa and this is Examiner's Tales. So in this video I'm talking about GCSE English Language and I'm talking about the creative writing task. I'm going to be using AQA as that's who I've been examining for over the past few years. Last year was the first year of this new qualification specification, so I've already marked a lot of these that are going to be similar to what you're doing this time around in 2018. So first of all, I just want to recap for anybody who's perhaps earlier on in their GCSE is not quite clear on what I'm talking about, or anybody who's late on in that GCSE and still not clear what I'm talking about. So this is section B. You'll get an image for AQA and you get a choice of two questions. At the start, you get this kind of overarching prompt that relates to both tasks. You are going to enter a creative writing competition. Your entry will be judged by a panel of people of your own age. Write a description suggested by this piece. Or write the opening part of a story about a place that is severely affected by the weather. Now, as you can see, there's some tie in between these two. There was some tie in last year, but it might not necessarily be as clearly related as this. And anyway, you don't you can take things in your own direction as well. And what I wanted to really go for through was the marking process and put your mind at rest because people think, well, what if she just doesn't like horror stories so she doesn't like mine? Or what if she's got a rubbish sense of humour and she doesn't get my jokes? We're going to try and hopefully they will be funny and we'll understand when you're joking. And in terms of genre, so whether you do a sort of horror story, which by the way I would love because Stephen King is my favourite author, uh, or you do a romance or sci-fi, whatever it is, that doesn't matter. It'll be great if there is a focus, we can pick up some kind of genre in your piece, it would be fantastic. But it's not a case of the examiner's like, oh, I'm not keen on that, so I'm not going to give them as many marks. That does not happen. As you know, we're applying those uh, assessment objectives. And what we do is, We'll get the piece and we actually mark this one twice. It opens up on a screen and we see it all. And first of all, we look at the first assessment objective, so AO5. And then we will go through the piece of work, marking it in terms of those assessment objectives. So every comment that we either write from scratch or we have a list of comments that are already pre-prepared that we can drag and drop next to your work. And uh, so we go through that and we have to add comments in order to justify the mark that we've got. You never see a piece of script, you never see a page without anything added to it by the examiner. And the way we work is as soon as we see that you've done something that puts you in one of those bands, we'll make a note of it along the side of your work. We'll tick within the work where we're seeing what we're talking about. So when somebody else looks at this in the future, they know and they're able to see why the mark was arrived at. And then we will do the same. So we open up the same piece of work and we will apply AO6. So your spelling, punctuation, vocabulary and so on. And all the comments again will be added related to that assessment objective. So it's hard work. It, there's a lot to it. It takes quite a long time. If the student's done well and they've written an appropriate amount for the response it takes quite a long time because we're serious about it and we want you to get the right mark obviously uh, so there's lots of comments added that are all directly related to those assessment criteria and very detailed so that's why I encourage you to know those quite well. If you haven't already watched the videos about assessment criteria, you might want to check those ones out. So I'll pop you a little link to them, perhaps in the description box as well. And yeah, so we apply both, both objectives separately to arrive at the final mark. And every single response is marked by two people. It's called double marking. So I'll mark it 
say and then another marker somewhere else will mark it again and in theory that mark should be exactly the same now obviously this is really tricky we're talking about something that is subjective it's creative so people can differ slightly in their opinions but it's never going to be a great difference. Now, if the difference in the mark is greater than two points, it will be reassessed by a senior examiner or a team leader. Both people who have marked it will be spoken to and then a mark will be arrived at. So again, it's all about that fairness and doing it that way ensures that everybody gets the appropriate grade in the end. I hope that's helped because I feel like people just don't know what goes on behind the scenes and a lot of this comes down to the fact that as examiners we have to be quite discreet in the way that we talk about the exams and hopefully, fingers crossed, I've not said anything untoward, um, it's a little bit of a risk talking about these exams, but I'm willing to do it because I want a nation of young people to do well in English. If you're a regular, regular to my channel, you'll know I've done a lot of videos on Animal Farm, and that's because I'm passionate about language, and I'm passionate about words uh, being powerful in the same way that George Orwell was and I want you to be able to use language well so hopefully by talking from an examiner's perspective I've been able to help you on this little journey. Alright then, if you are finding these videos helpful please hit that like button so I know, so I know to make more of them. If you have questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below. If other people have asked questions and you feel you can help them out, that would be great. What I'd really love is for my channel English Through Experience to become, you know, a sort of social place where you can all help each other out. Alright then, thanks for watching, like and subscribe.